Okay, guys, we are going to learn how to make music using Cubase. It's a DAO that actually you can find on Steinberg.net. When you go to Steinberg.net, you go to uh, page Cubase, and then you have a button here to get it. So you got to choose from buying a Cubase Pro or Cubase Artist. I'm using Cubase Pro, but actually I'm really suggesting you guys when you start to just start with Cubase Artist, it's much more than what you need. And the price actually you are more into almost half price than the Pro. So basically you can start with that and later on in a few months when you get ready and you want to upgrade to the Cubase Pro to use more VSTs and more things actually for the sound engineering, then you can go and get the Cubase Pro. This is the latest version and you need to buy also there is something very important the USB e license key that you can buy from Toman.de or from the internet so this is something that you need to get e license actually will be uh, installed into the USB key that you will have to plug into your computer every time you use in Cubase okay so this is the first part you get and when you installed your software and you start it this is the first uh, window that you get is the Steinberg hub what is Steinberg hub in the left side actually you get all the news that you have from Steinberg for example if you have the latest version or the fix or the update you can go straight and download it from there and from the right side you have the recent project and here I'm going to ask you to go to more to get started with an empty project I suggest you to keep prompt for a project location then actually you can use the location that you want and you know exactly where you work with your project so I will say create and then it will ask me where I want to go so I just create a test project and I will say select folder and then I know exactly that my project is under select project folder that I will find later on so this is the first interface that we have It's an empty project so what we're going to do is to make a track from scratch and to, to get to the mix down and we are going to use only what we have already included in the Cubase uh, program so let's get started here you have the interface we have actually four different parts this is the first and main part we call it the project window the right side in this part you have what we call the media section the media section is where we're going to find all your loops and your samples including the instrument presets and everything the under section over here where we have to make it just simple let's use for now only the mix console so you have the mixer here and in the left side what you see is empty right now we call it the inspector and where you will have all the details about your track or the channel that you're going to create so first of all you gotta set up your sound card and make sure that the sound is coming out so you go to studio studio setup and then under vst audio system you make sure that you are using the right sound card over here so i have many so if you don't have any external card you just use your generic low latency issue driver that you have in your computer if you have your sound card you gotta select the driver of your sound card okay you say okay now let's try to make a basic um, house track with basic drop kit to get a good foundation and then we will start to add some melodies like bass lines lead synths pads strings to create decent backing track then we will record a vocal or we use a capilla from our uh, sound library and we will finish up by arranging and mixing all together so let's get started now the first thing here in your right side you have the loop and samples this view over here depends on the version that you have if you have the latest version i'm using here the 10.5 if you have a previous version maybe things can be a little bit different so i click on loops and here i have all these packs that are actually already included in cubase it's a lot lot of sounds and instruments so actually you have more than enough what you need to get started so don't try to get any samples from outside at the moment just use what we have here it's a lot of things so what i want to do here i'm going to use the first alan morgan signature drum to get the foundation of the drums so i click on it so here you gotta select what you are looking for i'm going to select midi loops 
and MIDI files because I do prefer to work with MIDI loops because it's much more extensible and you can be much more free, change sounds and you're really free on doing anything you want with the MIDI files. And later on I will show you also how to use the audio files. So here under the sub style, so I just selected uh, yeah, progressive house. You can listen to every sample that you have here by just clicking on it. If it doesn't start automatically, make sure that you activated the button here or to play result. And here you have your uh, volume control, so you can put it right where you want. So I can try others. Okay, this is a simple track, so this is very simple. You just click in it, you drag and drop it into your um, project window it will import all the loop you see here the loop if you click on it you can see all the details of the sounds that are actually are included into this preset if you click into this button every key has different sound and if you want to know exactly what sound you have for example in these dots that are included you just click here and you have you can see the hats here this is close hat these are open hats and here we have clap kick and here we have the kick another kick so these actually you see are different sounds in one loop the first thing i will do is to make sure to have i have i have more freedom to work on each sound separately i'll click on it and i will go to midi and i will dissolve all the parts to have different parts of each sound as you can see here i have two parts and here i have other two parts if it doesn't dissolve everything at the same time sometimes it happened i never understood why but let's say again i'll go to midi and i dissolve again these two and i will get two different sounds here so if i click on this one i can see only one sound and i can check where is it is the open hat if I come to the other channel, I can see only one dot here in one line and I can check what is that. It's, it's close hat and etc. I can go again here. Here I have again two sounds. Do the same thing. MIDI. The solve part. Say OK. And then I will have them separately again. And let's see what we get here. It's a clap. And here is the kick. So you see the first tracks actually that I've been dissolving are muted. They are, this color means that they are not, if I put solo, you will not hear anything from it. But if I put solo on this track, I can hear the hat, the other hat, kick, and the clap. So I will take away the solo everywhere here, just keep everything on. And then actually I can select this one, click right and just delete it. I don't need it anymore. Remove select track. Yes. Remove select track. Or you can select many by clicking shift. And get them all. So if I want to have more space here, remember that in this side, you can hide every part in your screen to have more space to work. For example, this one, I can hide the lower part. I can hide my right side and I can even hide my left side as well so I can have maximum space on my desktop if, if needed. So when I'm doing arrangement, maybe I will have to uh, hide certain parts and when I need the other parts, I'll just call them back. Here, this is the limitation of my loop. It's four bars starting from here. If I wanna make it big, I just click H on my keyboard and now I can listen by clicking on space or clicking here start entry and as you can see you have loop turning it's blue because here I've been activating the cycle if I deactivate the cycle the track goes on and it doesn't reloop the section that I've been selecting as you can see here, I have my BPM on 120. If I want to change something, I just put it there. When I create a project, it's automatically 120. And then you can change by just clicking on it and put the tempo that you want. 
So we keep it just 120 for the moment. And let's try to get another sound, like a normal bass line. So if you want to go and check for another sound, either I can just come here and reset the attribute filter that I've been doing. I can come here and search for a bass line. If I don't have a bass line, I might go and find another package where I have more sounds. So I click again on this button, Home. Go back to the loop. And maybe I will go to the EDM tool. I will select again a MIDI files and MIDI loop. Okay. Take away all my selection here. I will reset all the attributes to make sure that everything show up. You see, now I have everything. So if I make just bass, now I have different bass lines here. If I just want to listen to one, click on it. Click another one. We'll click another one. If you want to listen to another one. Just if I select Classic House, it gives me another uh, sub-selection. So I can just click and listen. It might take you a time to listen because that's the part that actually you have. You gotta have a fun with it is to listen to different sounds. Take another one. Okay, let's say we like this one. We just drag and drop it into our project. And here we have the loop. So we slide it a little bit left. And since here this loop is, has only two bars, we can duplicate this loop by clicking Ctrl D for duplicate. And now we have a full four bar loop. If you want to listen only to the bass line, you click solo here and click play. If you want to listen to what it gives with all the other instruments, the drum instruments, just take away the solo and play all together. Okay, now since we have the drums and we have a bass line, let's add some lead synth and see if we can get something more groovy. I will come back here again on my search bar and we'll just look for lead synth. Okay, I have this lead synth, so I can listen to what I get here. Let's see. Okay, this is on school, same key. Drag and drop it into my project. Again, always comes into my cursor where is my timeline is so I just click on it and slide it left into the beginning of my project and again if you want to have a full loop of four bars I need to click on it Control D for duplicate now I can listen on solo what we have here listen to it with all the projects So you can see you can already have something shaping up and the last thing if you want to understand actually the sounds that we're using over here where they are coming from if I select my track here it comes to my inspector and you can see here this part where it's called a retrolog this is the synthesizer that I'm using synthesizer VST VST is for virtual system technology if I want to see the synthesizer just click here edits instrument and here I have my sound. So you can hear, this is exactly the sound that I'm using for uh, my synth. And if I click on the other channel, I see here Retrolog again, but it is using another sound for the bass line. And for my drums, I'm using what it's called Groove Agent SE. If I click here, I have my Groove Agent SE. So this is the VST you are using. This is just a first look to get you started and understand actually the process of the whole uh, programmation of the sound and how you can just use 
only what we have included in Cubase to get started and I think you have a lot a lot to discover especially with the sounds you see here I just been through a few sounds but you have thousands of them over here I hope this is can be very helpful for you guys if you want to watch more and learn more follow up our uh, courses online skizdjacademy.com we are giving face-to-face -face classes through Zoom or uh, Google Hangout. The courses are really uh, adapted to each one, each level from the beginning to the advanced level. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you in another video soon. Ciao.